Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through YouTube, Spotify, Rumble, and Apple Podcasts. Today we continue in our study of the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 26, verses 23 through 25, which reads, Then he went up from there to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servants, Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord, and he pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug a well. That's Genesis chapter 26, verses 23 through 25. Today we return to our study of Genesis chapter 26. Although Isaac lived the longest of all the patriarchs, 180 years, less is recorded of him than of the three others. This is the only chapter exclusively devoted to Isaac's life. Today's passage is the key to understanding the whole chapter Because up to this point in Isaac's life, circumstances shape most of his decisions. In today's passage, we see that he finally came to see that through all the opposition over the wells he had dug, or his father had dug, God had been guiding him back to the land of promise, back to those places where his dad, Abraham, had walked in fellowship with God. In verse 23 of today's passage, we read, Then he went up from there to Beersheba. Beersheba was the spot that Abraham was when he made a treaty with Abimelech. Beersheba was also where Isaac and Abraham departed from and returned to when they went to Mount Moriah. Beersheba was the place where God's people had found peace and restoration. The same will be the case for Isaac. Isaac went up to Beersheba because he sensed on a spiritual level that this was where God wanted him to be. If God had previously been leading Isaac through opposition, now Isaac was willing to be led by God. Being led is one thing, though. Knowing God in a more increasingly and intimate way is another. In verse 24 of today's passage, we read, And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. As he did to Abraham, Isaac's dad, God appeared to Isaac on the heels of his obedience. This just highlights the fact that real faith leads to obedience, not perfect obedience, because we will never be perfect at anything this side of heaven, especially our obedience to God. The key is that we are learning to hear God's voice and walk in his ways. And the more we respond to truth, the more truth will be given to us. Central to God's promises to Isaac was one command, do not fear. It's a refrain that echoes over and over again in the pages of scripture, a command given by God to all humble enough to receive the free gift of his acceptance. God said, fear not, to Abram when Abram wondered when he would see his promised heir. God said it to his people as they looked at the odds stacked against them in the promised land. God said it to Joshua as he prepared to take the reins of leadership from Moses. God said, fear not to Elisha when he thought he was outnumbered. The words echo through the Psalms as a means of encouragement during worship. 
In 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, we read, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Fear is at the root of all disobedience to God, and our ultimate fear is separation from God. In order for us to overcome fear, we must develop a maturing understanding of God's love for us. This is why we are to persevere through our trials, because it is in the context of the impossible moments of life that God's goodness shines forth the best. God came to earth in the form of the Lord Jesus in order to help us overcome our fears. First and foremost, our fear of him. As long as we are afraid of God, we cannot overcome any fear that we find in our souls. Fear creates suspicion, distance, defensiveness, and insecurity. The greatest block in the spiritual life in our spiritual life is fear and no spiritual discipline is possible when we are in fear of God. Brennan Manning once said God's love is based on nothing at all and that is what makes us secure. God was teaching Isaac a very important aspect about his love which is summed up in a simple statement. Merit-filled love can never be trusted. The love that believes I must perform for God is the most unfaithful of loves because when we lose our ability to merit love, we will inevitably lose the love. When we begin to define ourselves as those who are worthlessly loved, we will, for the first time, set foot on the trail of authenticity. For the first time ever, we will be able to stop with all our comparing and strivings. We can then and only then step out of the storm of our fears. For then and only then will we know God's unconditional love. This type of love is beyond the human condition. It is a love reserved only for God and those of his affection. God's love is encapsulated in a vacuum free of the contaminants of our fears. It is a pure love that loves for love's sake. It is based on nothing but love itself. God's love is based on nothing. And that makes us most free. Were it based on anything we do, and that anything were to collapse, then God's love would crumble as well. But with the God of the Bible, no such thing can be possible. When we get to the place where we begin to truly understand this, it will then be that we will live freely and to the fullest. We do not have to earn this love. Neither do we have to support it. It is a free gift from the God who thought up the plan of our rescue through his son's cross. In verse 25 of today's passage, we read, So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord, and he pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants dug a well. Like his father Abraham, when there was an altar and a tent in Isaac's life, it was all good. In the same place where Isaac's dad, Abraham, called on the name of the Lord, Isaac did the same. The altar was a symbol of his worship of the God of the Bible, and the tent was a reminder that this world was not his home. This is the first recorded altar built by Isaac. With the building of this altar, Isaac was saying that he had placed his entire faith and hope in the Lord God alone. Did he struggle beyond this moment in his walk with the Lord? <laughs> Absolutely. Because the struggle 
is a very essential part of the development of our faith in this God who loves us unquestionably. God's love for you and me is undying because the Lord Jesus laid down his life on our behalf. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.